change gears and talk about the new hydrogen policy ashish bhandari managing director and ceo of samax group and along with him saman sinha chairman and ceo of uh, renew power depot join us mr sinha mr bhandari good morning thank you for joining us mr sinha the hydrogen policy good statement important that india migrates to a new clean source of fuel but what is the difference between intention and actual implementation what are the bottlenecks what are the challenges and how effective do you think this policy will be thank you so much for having me on the show well look that's a ton of questions that you asked me in that uh, one question of yours um look i th- i think that green hydrogen is an absolute essential requirement for india as a country the reason being that india imports a tremendous amount of fossil fuels as we all know almost 150 billion dollars every year and that number is increasing and will double over the next uh, 7 to 10 years uh, green hydrogen is a way for india to find some degree of uh, independency uh, from uh, fossil fuels by replacing a lot of the grey hydrogen which you know the feedstock of which is uh, very often lng uh, and uh, essentially replace that with uh, hydrogen that we can make within the country using renewable energy so i think it's a very important uh, method for us to be in our dependence on imports uh, now the second part of your question was what is the gap between implementation and uh, the policy look i think uh, it's very important that we get the right policies both on the demand side and the supply side i think the policy that came out yesterday was more focused on the supply side which is how to actually make the renewable energy part of it a little bit cheaper how to store the um, uh, the, uh, the green hydrogen or ammonia that is uh, to be formed for exports so i think it is really focus on uh, those kinds of things allowing the uh, renewable energy to be produced in one part of india and shipped to another part of india uh, through using the interstate transmission network which i think is very critical uh, so all of those things are really focused on that part of the on the equation i think from this point on the government has to now start thinking about how to essentially encourage people to move towards using green hydrogen and really creating the demand side of the equation so i think that is something that we still have to wait and see uh, but at least the supply side has been addressed to some extent and that will hopefully allow the costs of uh, producing green hydrogen to come down and as that comes down and you create the demand side over time you will have the creation of a fairly large uh, industry where india can also essentially become a net exporter of green hydrogen through the form of ammonia as well so i think a lot of very positive things in this first of all the government's intent which is very clear the second that they've moved to make some of these things possible and now uh, we need to see a lot of the other actions coming into place and i think a few years from now you'll probably see a very large uh, green hydrogen slash ammonia industry developing in the country mr sinha can you break it uh, for our viewers that what have been the global parallels is uh, clean uh, green hydrogen more like still at a lab experiment stage or commercially it is possible and how far do you think we are behind the curve you know like evs the experimentation started almost a decade ago we've in reality seen the first ev roll out about 2 3 years ago in india yeah look i don't think that as far as green hydrogen is concerned that we are behind the curve at all um in your in, you know that india runs one of the largest renewable energy programs anywhere in the world and renewable energy accounts for 70% of the cost of green hydrogen uh, so this is a new and emerging industry anywhere in the world at this point in time of course the cost of green hydrogen are still higher than that uh, that people can get from using other sources of making uh, hydrogen which is really called grey hydrogen in a sense uh, and that's everywhere in the world and so therefore at this point globally people have not shifted to green hydrogen but the visibility of cost reduction is there given the cost reduction that you've seen on the renewable energy side it is likely to to play out similarly in the manufacture of green hydrogen and that will happen over the next i would say 4 to 5 years now how the question is how do you actually get the cost down you have to get the cost down by getting people to start adopting uh, green hydrogen creating the scale that is required the technology and the ecosystem that is required to bring costs down so it's a bit of chicken and egg and i think what you have to do is you have to start creating a green hydrogen mandates for people to start adopting some degree of green hydrogen uh, using that create the scale to bring down costs so it's a little bit of you have to really work on both ends of this to make the whole thing happen and that is really what the government has started doing 
But make no mistake, this is happening everywhere in the world right now at the same time. India is not behind the curve at all. In fact, India is in some ways taking the lead. And if you read the intent of the national policy that was announced yesterday, it essentially uh, tries to make India in an exporter potentially of green hydrogen. And that is possible because A, we have really cheap renewable energy at this point in India. And two, uh, because we are, we are actually on, on the same part of the curve as anybody else is, and therefore we can actually use our country to provide a base for exports for green hydrogen and thereby leapfrog to some extent this whole industry. So I would say we're actually playing, not catch up at all. We're actually trying to take leadership in this industry, which I think is a real positive. Okay, so that's Saman Sina uh, talking about how India can be in the leadership role when it comes to green hydrogen. Uh, Mr. Bandari, if I can come to you, good morning. This is Nantara. Um, you know, when it comes to green hydrogen, there is, of course, the entry cost as well, right? Um, yesterday, I was in conversation with a startup backed by Aadhaar Poonawala, who was saying that green hydrogen can sometimes cost 4x more than regular energy, fossil fuel energy. How big a problem is that going to be? So Nantara, first, uh, very warm morning, good morning to your viewers and thank you for having me on the show. Um, the price differential that you have currently between what would be grey hydrogen, as someone call it, and green hydrogen is quite significant. And that price difference is driven both by the cost of uh, uh, generation of electricity, which is more than 50% of the cost of generating that green hydrogen. And that includes the cost of distribution and then the electrolysis part of it. What the government's trying to do is to address each part of that cost equation. Uh, the first, I think, on the electricity side, especially on the transmission side, the hydrogen announcement yesterday goes a long way in addressing some of the questions. Some of the state elements of uh, what the state governments have uh, authority and ability to do is still an open bit, but it's a step in the right direction. Next comes the electrolysis part, which is the other 30 to 50 percent of the cost, which the government expects to bring down by um, supporting manufacturing, giving tax breaks, um, uh, coming up with PLI schemes so that the, the hardware and the equipment part of the green hydrogen generation part cost also comes down. Even after you do that, I think for the next three years, even longer possibly, there will be a viability gap between what gray hydrogen is at and what green hydrogen is at. And there the government will have to come in, support funding uh, of some of the critical projects, get certain government PSUs, fertilizer companies, uh, petrochemical companies to buy green hydrogen almost mandatorily, like you need to have 10% blending of green hydrogen or something of that sort that, that creates a demand side momentum as well, like Sumanth was saying. So the supply part is being addressed. Now the demand part needs to get addressed and not look at whether you are at 100 rupees per kg today, aim to get to that number three to four years from now. Um, and knowing that between now and the next three years, you are in this global marketplace where you have to be competitive, looking to bring your cost curve down, not focusing on what the gap is today. But the gap's a real question. Yep. Yeah? It, it, without government support, industry will have a tough time um, bridging the gap by themselves. Mr. Sinha, if I can come to you for that uh, point then, uh, you know, because you said this policy is also addressing more of the supply side issues. So with this differential, this arbitrage, that gap uh, that exists, uh, Mr. Bhandari is saying the best way is with government support. Uh, what are your views? Is, is that question for me? Yes, Mr. Sinha. Sorry, could you repeat the question if you don't mind, Nantara? Yeah, sure. I was saying Mr. Bandari is talking about this arbitrage, the gap that exists in the price differential will have to have been addressed by the government incentives, government policy. You've talked about the new hydrogen policy being more uh, supply side driven. How in your view can this arbitrage be addressed to make sure the demand exists? 
Yeah, so look, that's the other part that we're waiting for. So I think one of the things that the government could look at doing essentially is that just like you have a renewable purchase obligation target for consumers of power, which actually uh, requires them to have a certain minimum amount of renewable energy in their overall power basket. Similarly, for consumers of hydrogen, green hydrogen right now, you can specify that they have to have a minimum amount of green hydrogen and that percentage can keep increasing over time. Now, that would what that would do is essentially create demand for green hydrogen, which then from with all the supply side interventions could be, could be possibly supplied. Now, obviously, in the beginning, the cost of green hydrogen will be higher, but it will come down over time and come down quite rapidly. So I think green hydrogen purchase obligation targets are one simple way of, of providing demand that is required. Now, the question is on whom should this be applicable? It would be applicable on um, refineries, which use a lot of gray hydrogen, on fertilizer companies that use ammonia as a feedstock and that ammonia essentially can be made from green hydrogen rather than gray hydrogen. Um, eventually, it can be used also by, or it can be also be applicable on users of uh, LNG, um, and you can actually replace LNG as a feedstock as well by green hydrogen. So there are multiple industries where you can actually uh, mandate that a certain amount of their consumption, uh, which is currently coming in from gray hydrogen or LNG, can essentially be replaced by green hydrogen and thereby create demand. Now, the demand in India right now, the consumption in India right now of gray hydrogen is about 6 million tons. And that is expected to grow to double of this in the next 8 to 10 years. Now, so, th so you can initially say that, look, please replace 5% or 10% of the total amount of gray hydrogen with green over the next 3 to 5 years. Right? So that will create the demand side. You have the supply side interventions already happening. And therefore, you start bridging the gap that Ashish talked about uh, slowly and but steadily. And the expectation is that four to five years from now, uh, that gap would have come down to almost nothing. And then it won't be, you know, you, you won't require mandates any longer because everybody would really naturally gravitate towards green hydrogen rather than gray hydrogen. So I think that's the way you have to really go about doing this. Now, Mr. Sinha, I've had the opportunity of interviewing you as well as LNT together on your green hydrogen plans. And we played that interview on ET now. So the next question will be for Thermax and Mr. Bandari. You tell us, uh, Mr. Bandari, what is uh, Thermax's plans when it comes to green hydrogen? Uh, and would yesterday's policy be good enough for companies like yours to maybe step on the gas? Um we definitely intend to step on the gas. I think uh, green hydrogen um, for the nation and for addressing climate change is a certainty. So it's not a question of uh, if it will happen, it will happen and it will happen um, in the short term uh, and the short is uh, one to three years period, we will see a big transition. So for most players that are in the energy space, we have to think about what that means um, and and we are taking that uh, very, very seriously. Specifically to the policy, I think as Suman said, yeah, let's look at this as one of multiple port parts that will come out to the policy. Now that the central governments come up with an electricity policy, we'll have to see how the state governments look at it. Next, we will have to see how the demand side, which is what does MOPNG come up with, uh, what does uh, what incentives does uh, PLI come up with? So let's see how the rest of the ecosystem develops and uh, what uh, purchase obligations the steel ministry comes up with. And so we will see a lot of announcements uh, in the coming months that all connect to building a hydrogen economy uh, in India. Yeah. So let's look at this as one of many things that happen. For companies like Thermax, there are multiple roles that we can play. Yeah. First is just the entire execution and capability of designing a, a project around green hydrogen, the ability to bring um, electricity into play, but more designing the project from electrolyzer, the power management, um, all the software around it, 
the application, how does get something get blended, uh, what can get blended, how much can it get blended, bringing the science around it and, and to be able to set up an entire project yeah, from an EPC perspective. That's something that Thermax is building capability for. Next, which is uh, the whole electrolyzer question. Many companies in India will now look at, okay, how do I set up electrolyzer capability? What portion of it I can leverage our own capabilities for? What portion comes from global partnerships that companies will now know, uh, look at? And many, including Renew, is doing that uh, already. Many others, including Thermax, are looking at all of those options. Um, this is this is very very important and um, and at the heart of of every strategy that thermax is looking at going forward as well okay so let's uh, see how all of those uh, plans progress uh, renew power of course has entered into a joint venture with lnt as far as uh, green hydrogen goes uh, the rest of India Inc., we've heard noises from Reliance Industries as well as the Adani Group, which has already set up a company for the same. I'd like to thank both uh, Mr. Sinha as well as Mr. Bandari for being live with us today on the market to help us understand uh, green hydrogen. Green hydrogen, which is produced either from water electrolysis or from biomass, uh, considered to be more sustainable but also far more expensive. But the government's come out with a policy to incentivize the production and use of green hydrogen.